When I think of volcanoes, the first thing that comes to my mind is red, hot lava. Lava oozing from the center of the earth, erupting in violent explosions, and glowing angrily as it destroys all in its path. This is what I hoped to see when we went to Hawaii to visit Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park. I wanted to see lava. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is one of the Big Island of Hawaii's must-see destinations. The park encompasses over 300,000 acres and stretches all the way from sea level up to the 13,681-foot summit of Mauna Loa, the world's most massive active volcano. The park preserves incredible ecosystems and endemic Hawaiian species. It is better known, however, for the opportunity it gives visitors to view the ongoing eruption of Kilauea which has been active almost continuously since the year 1983. In fact, Kilauea is considered one of the most active volcanoes on Earth. I figured that our chances of seeing some real lava during the visit were pretty good. The plan was to see all the less active parts of the park first and save the lava for last. There's actually a lot to see in the park. We would visit an old lava tube, hike a jungle trail to a lava-destroyed valley, and see an archway of lava down at the ocean. The plan was to then go to the mouth of Kilauea Crater as it got dark and look down into the fiery mouth of the earth, the home of Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of fire. Hopefully, we would be lucky enough to see a fantastic show of boiling hot lava. So we are in Volcano National Park this afternoon. And it is beautiful here. Look at these gigantic Look at ferns. That's Look at these. a pit. So cool. Oh, there is a pit right there. You're right, Brooke. Don't go in there. Okay. Steep. Danger. This looks like exactly what we're looking for. All right, let's go. These ferns look amazing. The tunnel. Ooh, this looks cool. Oh man, this looks awesome. Oh, look at this thing. This is so cool. This is amazing looking. Whoa! Check this out. No way. Oh my goodness. Look at this thing. What is the lava? Lava tubes are a type of cave made by lava. They form in a few different ways, but the gist of it is this. As lava is flowing, either from a volcano or a fissure underground, the lava near the top of the flow, or the sides, cools down much quicker than the lava in the middle of the flow. This cooling forms a crust on top of the lava flow and insulates the hot molten rock inside. The lava continues to move through the tube as more and more lava flows from the source. As the source stops releasing lava, the level of the lava river in these tunnels goes down until it eventually stops flowing and hardens, leaving a hollow tube cave. That's why we have national parks, because they protect places like this. <laughs> this is so cool. That was so cool. That was an awesome lava tube. Super long. Matthew, stand next to that so I can get a sense of the scale. I can't really stand next to that without <laughs> It's huge. It's crazy. Big old furry ferns. So cool. This trail is beautiful. Danger. We're not gonna hike back up. We're just gonna get in the volcano and it's gonna spit us back to the top. Oh, look at this, guys. You'll live, I promise. Look at this. Look how cool it looks. This is so neat. It's 
crazy that this was once all molten lava. So cool, look at that, amazing. So we opted not to hike all the way today just because there's a lot of other stuff we wanna see in the park. We don't want to uh, get too tired before we go, but we are gonna continue up the trail. Okay, let's go. Put the rock back, it's gotta go on its pile. All right, okay, let's go. Back up to the forest. After the hike, everybody was pretty tired, but we were still holding out to go see the lava. From what we had heard, the best viewing would be in the evening, when the glow of the molten rock would light up the crater. So we decided to kill some time by driving down the chain of craters road to view the Holy Sea Arch. By the time we got back up to Kilauea, it was after dark. We pulled into the parking lot and a ranger informed us that the eruption had stopped. There was no visible lava. I was crushed. But not one to give up, I decided to run down the trail anyway, holding out hope that there would be something to see. All right, so they told us the lava stopped, actually. So unfortunately, we might not get to see lava. I'm running down the trail right now just to see if there's anything. It's pitch black, but I'm gonna run down a mile, see if I can see any lava. If not, we might have to come back another night. All right, let's go. Well, I ran out to the crater. There's not even a glow. Lava's quiet tonight. Whew. Means we're gonna have to come back another night. All right. I checked the National Park website every day, hoping to see signs of activity again. But Kilauea, it seems, was sleeping. I watched our days on the Big Island slip by and it seemed like we were gonna run out of time before Pele would wake back up. Of course, we make good use of our time to visit other beautiful places on the Big Island. But in the back of my mind, I had a feeling I was going to leave Hawaii just a tiny bit disappointed without seeing the lava. There were only a few days left in our trip, and I'd almost given up hope. That's when it happened. The lava started again. So we are back in Volcano National Park. That night that we were looking for the lava, there was no lava going but we checked every day and the lava is going again. So, we are here to see the lava. We spent the afternoon viewing a few other areas of the park that we hadn't visited on our previous outing. The sulfur beds, the steam vents, and the other side of the Kilauea crater. Again, the idea was to visit the lava eruption site in the evening when it would be easier to view. From this side, you can't see down into the crater. To be able to see inside, you gotta go to the other side. So we're gonna go over there and hike to the rim, see if we can see the lava. The evening could hardly come fast enough though. After walking around for an hour or two, I couldn't take it anymore. We drove over to the area where the eruption was taking place and walked down to see it. It was still very light outside though, and as we approached the mouth of the crater, my heart sank. It was hard to see much at all. Through my zoom lens, I could make out some little red spots of lava, but almost everything else looked black and gray. To make things worse, there were thick clouds of smoke and vapor. It was also raining. We went back to the parking lot feeling quite disappointed. The kids suggested that maybe we should just go home, but I was determined to wait till it got a little darker and try one more time. All right, we waited for a while for the sun to start going down. Now we're headed back to the lava to hopefully see it glowing in the nighttime. So sun sets in about 15 minutes. We got probably a little over half a mile to walk. So we should get there, perfect time. All right, let's do this. As we approached the crater, I couldn't help but think of how temperamental nature can be. I think that's what makes being outdoors always such an adventure. 
you never quite know where your journey will take you or what surprises it has in store. know if it would be better you know waiting till it's all the way dark but that's in like two hours we're not gonna wait around that long if you like this give us a thumbs up and if you haven't already consider subscribing we'd love to have you along on our million adventures bye